Good evening, everyone. Um, I'd like to welcome you to the third instalment of Degsy's Chili Talk. And with me tonight is a very special guest and a very dear friend of mine. I'd like to introduce Mr. John Kettle of Merry Hell and Recording Genius. Ooh, genius. Good evening, John. Well, good evening, Derek. And um, may I say I'm very, very honoured uh, to sit in these esteemed cha chambers, in chambers yeah. as, uh, as, as gentlemen should do, I think. Yes. After a hard day's work, we're going to have a, a bit of a chat and um, eat some I have chili. To say, indeed, indeed uh, I'm, fe I'm feeling a little bit of apprehension, I have to say, when I look at the um, yep. smorgasbord before now, th me. This is also new to me, although the chill is not. But the vegetarian crudités are. Oh right! Is that the right word, crudités? It certainly it can be. Yes. Crudités, crudités. It depends if you're a bit posh like yourself, Derek. Crudités yeah. is. I, I'd say crudities basically. Crudites. Is I'm just a. I'm, all, I'm an ordinary boy from Pem. You're a little bit more ruling class than I am. I'm from Leona. So you are exactly. So exactly. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So what we'll do first of all, John, we're going to start very mild. Right. And work our way up to death. Is mild left? Mild's on your left. Okay. Bitters it. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> so Bitter. first of all, John. Yes. Um, what must welcome. we do? Well, thank you welcome. very much again. Okay. Again. So we're going to start with sriracha. Sriracha. Okay. It's very nice sriracha. Okay. It won't, uh, won't be any. Um, pour, pour a little bit on, do we? Thus. Pour a little bit on said crudite. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. And we'll tuck in. I'm actually starving. Mm. Right. Mm. That's very nice. That. That is actually very pleasant. So, talking about albums, John, um, I'm right in saying that your first album, Shandyland, when you oh, were of yeah. Tan Sads, yeah. All right, okay. was recorded in Mrs Kettle Senior's front room. It, it certainly was, yeah. Which leads me on to the latest album, which is Emergency Lullabies, that has also been recorded in... Mrs. Kettle's front room, but your wife, Mrs. Kettle's. Front room. This, is, this is very true. It's very true. And in between that, you've been to studios all over the country, haven't you? Doing albums. Certainly, I've been very fortunate to um, to, to visit a lot of uh, lovely recording studios. I've run I've run uh, my own recording studio for several decades, now, several decades uh, mm. now. But but yeah, like kind of book ended with sort of I suppose my career as a musician started and my career as a sound engineer started in my mum's front room. I have to say though that the, the Shandyland album um, wasn't just recorded in, 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 no. in my mum's in my no. mum's room. We, 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 a, a lovely guy, Steve Edwards, had got a... Yeah, I know um, Steve. You know Steve, yeah. yeah. He'd got a studio in his garage and he gave me the keys to that studio and said, if you can work it, lad, you can make a record in it. So I had to learn how to out to work his studio. I had, I had a, another another local engineer called Dave Fillingham gave me some more. He, he essentially taught me taught me how to work it, and then and let me um, run uh, with the ball myself. So I had a very fortunate start there. Had you never done anything like that before? No, of course Shandy not. Land. I was I was just a guitar player, you know, yeah. just a guitar player. But I I was interested in 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 making recordings, but more as a sort of a way to sort of fuel or enable my own creativity. I hadn't really thought about it that much when I was young, to be honest. Mm. It was like, it was a means to an end, really. Yeah. So, but, but going forward from that, when we had Tans, as we were dead lucky, we ended up in loads of like beautiful studios, you know, big residential, yeah. um, classic old school places with the old tape machines and yeah. the, old, the big mixing consoles. and. I lo I, who wouldn't, what musician wouldn't love that environment? Yeah. But what I really loved was the creative process of being able to write a song and then realise it. Yeah. And, and, and in, 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 being, in being fortunate enough to do that and meet other people along the way, I met a producer called Phil Tennant, who was, he was really, he was really brilliant. He produced yeah. loads of bands uh, uh, that, that I really respected. And he passed on a lot of... Uh, skills and knowledge about yeah. arrangement and and it, you know you had to invest your energies into the performance not just the technology yeah. and he but he, he really enabled me in the studio to be able to sort of like he'd let me when everybody had gone for the tea he'd let me sort of do my own mix and 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 and, and, and Tansad's like sort of went forward with its uh um recording 
career in that sort of way really and then, and then when that was done when the band was done I found that because I'd been in that band and I got a few sort of like little skills that that some local bands wanted me to make demos for them yeah and and uh, and that's where my mum's from room and Steve Edwards' studio yeah. sort of came in uh, we'd 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 um, uh, we we took we took we we actually got some premises when the demand started to come in in the old pepper mill in, I in Wigan. That. I remember that. in pepper mill. Yeah, and where where Lidl is now. Yeah, that was that was one of Wigan's legendary studios. Yeah. Also, and prior to that as well, the the marvelous Paul O'Neill, the other uh, one of the other uh, well-known sound engineers in Wigan, had a had a had a studio in there. So it was a, it was a lot of nice sort of heritage. Uh, musical heritage uh, coming from around those sort of times yeah. we're like sort of fast forwarding like a million years yes. into the, to, to, to now to Merry Hell yeah to, to Merry Hell I, uh, because yeah. I've got a studio essentially studio now is based in the music projects in Pemberton but which is a marvellous place a marvellous mm. site but just before that we were based in, um, in the Merry old court where we, we were sat we were sat right now, and I spent a, a marvellous year here, uh, mm. uh, along, working alongside some of the marvellous people. Uh, it, just running a really, a, a, a really nice sort of project studio. And 13 years before that, we had a, a, a legendary um, studio business, which was called the Giraffe House, yes. which was essentially run out of a. a, a, a uh, a fr- on a friend's land in a in a in a in a barn, on on uh, over Banfalong way, and yeah. we I think I did thirteen years there, thirteen yeah. years in, in the giraffe house, yeah. and recorded did so much stuff, mm. so much stuff. So uh, so emergency lullabies. Oh yeah, yeah. That yeah. was essentially written. Uh, uh, sorry, recorded. In your house, in our house because yeah. of the lockdown. Yeah. Of course, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Are, that's what you asked me, wasn't yeah, it? Because yep. um, I know now that old time studios had a desk bigger than this that you'd, you'd need a sliding chair to get to faders. And, and, yeah, yeah. But now everything's condensed into such a small package. Yeah. yeah. But delivers such a massive yeah. output, doesn't it? It's it's and, it's it's amazing. So the modern recording studio you could is a computer. Yeah. Uh, which you can pick up and you can plug it into and a different socket and some software and you plug it into a different sof- uh, socket so in your house um, take it round to somebody else's house yeah. and, and, and it, so it's like taking Abbey Road from A to B yeah. and it's really really portable and it's, yeah. it's like a re- revolution that sort of democratised our sort of industry and mm. it's like enables it enables artists and sound engineers to be sort of very mobile and and sort of very very much in the moment so we had the lockdown mm. uh, we'd written the songs for the for, for that record and i'd captured i think nine of the drum tracks um really fortunately in the in the studio at tmp before we began the uh before the lockdown so i'd got the bedrock then of the record and yeah. we just i put the whole thing together as you said in our front room mm. and what what happened was um, all the band members just simply sent their parts into yeah. me. Um, no rehearsal, nothing. No. Just, just sort of them all making their own creative judgments on what they thought was right. Yeah. And they sent the parts in for me to edit and and, and if, if you like choose from. Well, it seems but, to have worked that. Well, I, I, the album was fantastic. A, thank you very much, Derek. Every thank you very much. Is a is a classic track, I think. Thanks very much. That's very um, that's lovely of you to say. So what, what did you think of Sriracha sauce, Loved John? it, loved it. Yeah, shall we do the other half? Yes, let's do it. Do I have to have a dip of that? You can that? have a dip of that, yeah. Yeah. Also, I may add that our cameraman, Neil, is eating exactly the same the same thing that we are. Is it good for mm. you, Neil? Oh, I like it. You like it? Where are we on the Sriracha? Any, the Sriracha on the left. I don't think Neil's got quite as much apprehension as I've got about the chilli. Um, no. Experience, because I, I know he does like... Um, the hot stuff. Mm. He likes the danger. <laughs> oh, so, right. So, and now it's my turn, isn't yeah, it? Quid pro quo. Quo quo. Quo quo. Isn't there a thing in Silence of the Lambs like that? He say he uses that phrase all the time. Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal Lecter. Yeah. Yeah. So Quid I think a gen- I think as we sit here as two gentlemen, I think 
perhaps the most important question where we need to get straight with one another is I need to ask you, I'm going to change my accent a little bit oh, yeah. for this, Derek. I'm going to say, where did you school, sir? Where did I school? OK. In, the, in a small little fishing village near Manchester Colley. Oh. OK, now oh. I went to St Peter's Infants and Junior School. And then from junior school, back, back in them days, it was big school after that, wasn't it? Mm. It wasn't yeah. secondary, mon. So I then went to Bedford High School. Um, I think I left about 1984. Went, left off Friday, started work on Monday. Mm. You know, um, that was my school. And I, weren't, I wasn't very keen on school, I'll be honest with you. No. Some lessons I liked, you know. And music, I was never interested in it. I mean, we had music and they played tambourine and they played triangle and all that. Yeah. But my favourite musical instrument was the dinner bell. The dinner bell, I like that. Was that the dinner Belting. bell? Belting. So that's what that was my school. And then from leaving school, then I became a plumber, and I did that for a number of years. And and now I'm here doing all kinds of things, and I love it. You know. See, I've never asked you that before. Yeah. And this, this I am occasion is given. A plumber. Amazing, yeah. Yeah. So I know who to call. I remember you fixing the lavatory in the Jurassic oh. And you actually relished that. I didn't relish it, no. <laughs> I didn't relish it. It was a macerator. It was a macerator, well, wasn't, it? wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So what That's we're going to do now, John, we're going to move on <laughs> to one of these wonderful sausages. And we're going on to Tabasco sauce now, right, which okay. is the second one in. I love these sausages, actually. Yeah. They're quite nicely. They're not just corn sausages, these, by the way, John. They are. Um, are they. Um, They've got other things in them, but no meat. Can we try? Yeah. Mm. Mm. So you don't, you don't need meat, Derek. Giraffe house. Yeah. What's up that? Okay. Just a quick question, this one. Why was it called so? <laughs> Where did that name come from? Oh, it was good. It was a good reason, and um, it's spelt quite oddly as well. It's spelt J A R A F. Um, but it's called a giraffe house because Trevor, who was the um, the landowner at the time he basically got this barn on his building and it was a it was a tall thin building uh, long long and thin I think it was about 13 foot wide yeah. altogether for it. so it was thin in respect to its width but it had no first floor at all so it was just it was just one of those where it was a it was a ground floor and ceiling that's all there was and um, and it was never, wasn't used for anything apart from keeping sort of stuff under, you know, like a bit of a, a bit of a storeroom. And he always used to say that it was a building that was just fit for giraffes, what, you know. A giraffe had yeah. fit in it. Yeah. Really? So, and it's it that kept, simple. Yeah, simple as that. So it was, it, it, it's, its role in life was to be a potential giraffe house. But it's spelt J-A-R-A-F because there's a great drummer um, who was in the studio um, with us one day, and he said, do you know what I'll do? I'll make your logo for Giraffe House. Mm. And he, he, had a, he, could, he had some some IT skills, which none of us had at all. And we're like, oh, that's impressive. We can move into the modern world. We can move into the 1980s here. I mean, it was about 2001 at the time, but yeah. we, can, we can move forward. And, and he typed this logo out, and it was spelled J-A-R-A-F. And we said, well, it's a that says giraffe, and he's like, Yeah, giraffe. And he'd not obviously, he didn't know that giraffe had a was spelt with a G. Now, I'm not one to talk, ladies and gentlemen, particularly poor at spelling myself as my students would attest to. Um, but uh, I liked it more than the word giraffe. I like giraffe more, it's made it sound really cool. Mm. I almost gave it like a kind of a kind of reggae, kind of calypso type feel. Made it feel like it might be a really easy going place to come to. We should have painted the, the wall like a, in the colours of a giraffe. That would have been the that only would enhancement. Been cool, it? it would have made it better. Mm. But we never did. So that was why it was called Giraffe House. There were some good albums made. But no, I, I remember mm. when I worked for you as your guitar technician, John. You were. We would be coming back from gigs and, and we nicknamed the road that leads to Giraffe House a Shabby Road. Shabby Road, yeah. Shabby Road because it, it used to knock suspension off, didn't it? It certainly did. And that's what I should have called that business in the first place. Shabby because Road Studio. It was, that truly summed it up. 
Mm. You had for good on a shabby road. I'm sure to when it. We, we came down it once, and you and McCall, uh, not you and McCall, you and McGregor and Charlie Bonham were coming down it on motorbike. <laughs> it was like the, the road of bones. Apparently, it's not like that anymore. Apparently, it's been a bit uh, of time, mate. Now with yeah. double yellow lines all on posh, it. Wasn't it. All posh now. So we we so start now. So shall we do the other half? Uh, yes, let's of, do the. I've very much enjoyed that. Actually. Did you like that? To I basketball? really did. I loved it. Mm. So what would you like to know off me now, John? Um, Okay, so I'm going to ask you, um, what's your most embarrassing moment, Derek, that you might come to mind? Well, I perhaps can't talk about it, but as a normal thing, um, I remember a few years ago now, I developed a lump on my groin, not near... Nowhere near tickle tackle or out like that. <laughs> it was just a lump. Yeah. <laughs> so I made an appointment for a doctor because you, you don't You're know. Best you better, you better do it, aren't you? Yeah. So I thought, well, what I'll do, I'll have a shave so we can see this lump, mm. right? So I goes in. He says, right, <laughs> Mr. Derrick, why do you not bed? Take your trousers off. Yeah. And he took one look at it and he went, it's a shaving rash. And <laughs> the, the words that come out of my mouth, right? As soon as I said them, I regretted it. <laughs> and I just said, I've shaved that for you. <laughs> right? Well, and I, I closed my eyes, I went, wow, why have you just said that? And he went, you know, he said, thank you. Well, and I've still got the lump, but he, he said, it, if it don't get any bigger, don't come back. Yeah. But to say that to a doctor, I've, I've shaved my private parts for you. Yeah, for you. I think, to a male doctor as well. I think it's lovely though. I think you're sort of breaking away taboos though. Yeah. And just letting, just being but, lovely and honest and, and you're vulnerable, aren't you? I remember being, yeah. a, is it called a urologist coach? A little while ago with a female urologist who was looking at a, a particular issue. We've all got these issues, Derek. Yeah, yeah. I suppose when we get as to a certain age. Reach that, that yeah. half century. Yeah, and, uh, and literally, as I was being, let's say, manipulated, <laughs> and the, the and intruders. I, I actually there's a certain a certain <laughs> pinching that occurred on the delicate parts yeah. that made me at the ceiling. And I remember there was a kind of a chaperoneness in the in the corner. It was just laughing, laughing out loud. And I was kind yeah. of laughing. I was laughing, crying, laughing, crying. As she did this, she said, "What's your job?" And I said, "I said I'm a sound engineer." And uh. And she said, oh, what, what music software do you use? Which took me back, to be honest, in that context. Yeah, yeah, would do. As you were, uh, yeah. Uh, Pro Tools, it's Pro Tools. <laughs> and, she, and, she, and, she, and, and she says, and she sa I said, what, what, you, you, so you, you, you're a sound engineer yourself? No, no, I'm a musician, you know, I'm a musician. And what instrument? And she said, as she, was, as she was manipulating, as I said, those delicate, soft tissues, she said, I play the organ, John, which, yeah, was it, I mean, he, I'm <laughs> lad though, like, and he's going, prodding it like mm. that. And, yeah. But I said, I shaved it for you, doctor. <laughs> so, John, okay, um, we're moving on to now to a, mm. a nugget. A qual nugget. Is it a nugget this, got, a, this, a is, nugget? this is a mango. Oh, right. The mango one. It's nice. quite sweet, very, this. It should be. Uh, nice. Let me dip in. Oh, mm. I've got a good lot there. Are these getting hot, are these, do you think? Well, that's just gone a bit cooler, I think. You know. That's so, cooler, that. No threat in that, is there at all? As we've discussed, you spent a magnificent year here. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you moved on to the music projects in yeah. Pemberton. Yeah. Um, I believe you're doing some teaching as well as recording bands. Yeah. What yeah, does I, that involve, John? Well, I'm a, I've, I've, my job now has become 50 50. I'm a, still a sound engineer. and But I was. Um, Encouraged to get in, into sort of teaching the the, the, the the young fellow that runs that uh, college. He's a, a bit of a visionary, really. I think not because he asked me to get into teaching. I think that's been one of his biggest regrets, to be honest. But 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 he's a visionary guy uh, who is just got a way of making um, people feel comfortable when they come into a, a learning environment. Uh, he, he, he runs a non-hierarchical -hierarch kind of like 
staff structure in. So it's like he's not your boss as such. He feels like he's your mate. You know, he's, he's a, Martin Heaton. His name is. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's put together this like sort of community uh, hub uh, college, really, that that is a safe place and a supportive place for sort of creatives to to, to work in. You know, so I, I remember feeling when I was a youngin a little bit like like there weren't many people like me. I had a I found my own my own tribe and my own sort of mm. a few creatives who I could hang out with and, and, and get things going with. But there was nothing like that really at, uh, in Wigan as as I can as I can really remember anyway, certainly not for musicians. And um music projects by its name default started on, on a musical sort of premise. And he uh, as they put this thing together, um, uh, it encourages people who come, who, as I say, want a safe place to 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 be yeah. mu- musos. Yeah. And I, I love it. You know, I love it's the. I love the. I love working as part of the team, uh, mm. as a as a as a teacher now, as an educator, yeah. Derek. As an educator. An educator. Yeah. I'm an educator. Yeah, goodbye, Mr. Chips. Um, I'm not. I'm not knowing good I am at it, but but uh, I certainly. Like passing own. passing some of them things on yeah. that I've some of uh, successes and mistakes and techniques and things like that that we yeah. that we learn as we go along. I teach music tech and performance though, yeah. um, and uh, and run the studio from that premises as well. We have a nice room which is uh, it's a nice control room and yeah. nice uh, a nice place to, to work. Oh, God. Very very fortunate. Splendid. Indeed. So do we finish off this? We one? finish this off now. Yes. Mm. Well, no. nice that mango one, isn't mm. it? Yeah, it is nice. It was nice, mm. actually. So, I think I'm going to ask you now. I don't think I've asked you any musical questions so far. I know you're you're a musician yourself. I know you're a great fan of music as well. Mm. So I'm going to ask you, what is your best musical memory? Oh, there's been a quite a lot, you know. Um, back in the 90s when we used to follow your band round when we were known as the league the contingent the town sards yes yeah. yes um, some legendary gigs we went to there were, like me and my mate Ross and Sharon would think nothing again it van and drive it London watching town sards and driving home no I know we a load of we, Sharon would make a load of butties <laughs> a flask do you know what I mean? And off we'd go and come back. Um, there's been so many, you know. Um, myself playing as a gig. Um, for me, obviously, I think playing in front of Paul Weller's band downstairs in Vault, that was a highlight for me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, to play one of Ocean Colour Scene's songs and look round and Steve Craddock was looking through curtains and, and give it yeah. a thumbs up, I thought, oh, that's quite a... Yeah. A nice thing for me, like you know, because I'm not really a musician. I can play four chords now, John. I could only play three. Um, um, well, people, if you play more than two chords, you're showing you're off. Showing anyway. off, and you're doing so, a face you melter know. with four chords, aren't you? Yeah, abs- I think so. Yeah, it, like fourth chord will just be a little bit of emotion, won't it? Yeah, that you can yeah, slip, in like, yeah, slip it in. Yeah, just slip it in. Yeah, fourth chord. So we'll move on, John. <coughs> we are going a little bit hotter now. Right then. Okay. So I think we're on another chicken nugget, another corn nugget, sorry. Yeah, I've not tried a sprout either yet, so I'm no, just trying to No, you enjoy the sprouts, John. Which I love. Um, mm. So, let's go for it. This one is habanero. Oh, yeah. Habanero, this one, Neil. So, you find yourself in America on your own, okay, at one end of Route 66, yeah. now you've got either a Mustang <laughs> or a Tesla Model um, 3. I'll go for that Tesla one if that's alright, which is, is, it, is it an electric car. I don't know, I don't I think, think the, it is. I think, the, are they I think the original Tesla isn't, it's... Alright, I'll have one of them lecky ones if that's alright. You can have whatever you want, it's them, as fast yeah. as you like. Yeah. What album would you put on? <laughs> now you've got your foot down, right, roof okay. down, your shades on. Yeah. And you're batting it. What so album th- would you be playing? To be playing honest, then? I do that sort of thing on a daily basis, going to M6 in my in Citroen in Spat. In your French. But, in my French van. But, but, but that is a hard question to answer. Um, 
Can I answer it in my own way and say... Absolutely, yeah. I don't think I'd want one particular... I'd want a mixtape. A mixtape, yeah. First thing that comes to mind, I'd put on Born to Run. Yeah. Okay, oh, very, absolutely. very loud. And I'd probably say something to myself like, well, oh, it doesn't sound as big as it used to sound to me that now. It's still a great song, though. I wish them drums were a bit bigger because I've now become damaged by my yeah. own job and I can't yeah. listen to a yeah, record yeah, yeah. without pulling it apart. Mm. But uh, I'm not, I can't remember who produced that. I don't know if it's Bob Clear Mountain, but it's a astonishing so, bit of like... Ball to Run would have to be on it, wouldn't it? It would have to be on it. I'd probably, if it was American records, I'd probably need a little bit of Tom, Tom Petty. I'd yeah. want to sort of float down the freeway listening to Free Fall. Any who wouldn't want to do that, yeah. you know. But I would have to anglicise it a little bit. Or like Celtic size it, yeah. that experience. I'd You'd have, have, to have some fork in it. I would, I would. I'd add levelers. No, you know, I love. I would. Mm, yeah, there'd be a levelers track. Mm. I'd be going only because I've, I'm going to say this now because I've just fallen in love with the Pogues again. Um, yeah. So, so maybe some songs from Rum, so- Rum Sodomy and the Lash would be in the mix. Yeah. I'd, oh, pardon me. I'm repeating, ladies and gentlemen. Repeating. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and the the, uh, the the so Pogues tracks, um, Fastens though, Fastens. Yeah. Now you get to a car hire place and they've run out of Teslas yeah. and Mustangs, and what they've got is a big old Winnie Bago or only does forty mile an hour. What would you put on <laughs> then? Why well, you just cruising nice and gentle? <laughs> right, okay. I don't think Rum Sodomy and the Lash. Goes with the Winnie Bear. No, it, it wouldn't. It wouldn't actually. I'd, there'd still be a bit Pogues of James track Taylor. In. Yeah, a little bit of James. Yeah. Uh, going to Carolina in my mind, maybe. Yeah, but I'd probably Willie have. Nelson. I'd probably still have. I'd probably have still have a Pogues track. I'd probably have Ray Knight in solo. Yeah. But I would mellow it. I'd mellow it. They'd have to mellow in the Winnie Bear, wouldn't they? Cause I'd you, come down. You've got Ermat at Winder and. Little bit of Burt b- b- Baccarat. Oh, no. Yeah. Is he from Lee? Burt Baccarat. Burt Baccarat? Yeah. Is I don't not? think he is. Was he not? Georgie no. Fame was from Lee. He was indeed. That's the one, isn't it? Georgie yeah. Fame. I'd, I'd mellow down considerably. I mean, you would, wouldn't 